Chad, I really like this whiskey, but I'm looking for a way to change it up. Okay, Sarah, how about this? How about five ways that you can change the taste of your whiskey and still drink it neat? How about that? That's today's episode. Mm, what a coincidence. It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Chad. And I'm Sarah. And today we're talking about five ways that you can impact the taste of your whiskey while still being able to drink it neat. Right, transforming it by no addition to the things in the glass, just things that you can adjust. Now this is different and we wanted to make sure it was different than the five ways that you can save whiskey from becoming a drain pour. Linked right up there. Uh, which, so we're not gonna be taking these and saying, okay, make them into a cocktail, do this, do that. So don't expect any of these five ones to take a whiskey that you absolutely dislike and turn into one that you love. No, we're not wizards. We're not whiskey wizards. <laughs> not yet. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get into it with number one. One thing that can change the way you experience a whiskey is the glass from which you drink it. I actually said the vessel, because look. That's true. Got some plastic going on and here. And we oh. have been served <laughs> whiskey in plastic cups before. Even those Ooh. little cups that you put jello shots and like ketchup, ketchup in at in. restaurants. Kind of hard to get a nose. Not the best. Not the best sipping experience. No. But really that's what kind of we're talking about is the experience. And I think we all sort of evolve. I know in college I was going, I was doing a uh, lot the of shot you know, shots. So I was like, well, I need to get mm. some shot glasses. It burns. Not the best. Plus it's also conducive of uh, going too fast with your whiskey. Right, we want to sip and savor. Right. I mean, you do you, but. You know, it's sort of a, an evolution through your rocks glasses, your other glasses, until a lot of people end up on the Glencairn, which Very classic. we have stuck with because we just decided, since we do reviews, mm. to keep it all in the same vessel. Consistency. But you can also do a Copita like this, trap the nose. Trap the nose. Part of the enhancement experience. Exactly. Uh, there's like a market out there, right? Based on who's got the best glass that can transform your whiskey and make yeah. your experience the best. Uh, Norlin is one of those. We do actually really like the Norlin glass. There's lots of different ones, the neat glass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez, I could Canadian name. Canadian Glencairn, there's, sure. uh, there's, there's a lot of them. What we will say about the Norlin glass is it can change for the better or the not better. Mm. It really depends on the whiskey, uh, but we have sort of tricked some friends. It was mean, but we have yeah. served them the same thing in a Glencairn and a Norlin and asked them which whiskey they liked better. And it would depend on what they would choose, but they would swear that they were different. Yes. So once we told them that they're the same whiskey, <laughs> they thought that we were lying, but. Kind of a scientific experiment, but not really. Uh, not sponsored by Norlin. We're not trying no. to sell Norlins, but it can change it again for the better or the worse, depending on the whiskey. But it just shows how much of a difference the vessel can make on it. Now we're not saying if you have something that you dislike, you put it in one of these different glasses and all of a sudden you're gonna love it. The glass can only do so much. It can only do so much, exactly. <laughs> Drinking it outside. Now this might seem kind of obvious or mm. might seem not obvious at all, but there is something that changes your whiskey experience when you drink it outside. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the component of fresh air coming into play. We're talking mm. about temperature. Yeah. Just your atmosphere in general. You know, is it sunny? Is it cool and crisp fall? Is it raining? Is it snowing? Just being outside in general brings literally the elements into play versus <laughs> being inside in an air conditioned controlled environment. Right. Now, I'd say sometimes that could improve your experience and yep. sometimes it could maybe take away from it. I'm gonna say if it's a nice day like this, it's mm. always going to improve, uh, you know? It's just sort of like being outside can help improve your mood. Right. And I think the way you experience whiskey is can be very easily tied to how you feel, right? Nice Having fresh Having the fresh air. air is really changing the nose for me on this one. Uh, Ooh, yeah. And I think it's a bit like when we talk about certain pours, when we say they're, you know, super toasty and rich and oaky, and it reminds us of being outside on a fall day. Right. In my mind, that particular pour is going to taste better right. when I am outside on that day uh, versus just sitting inside, you know, an air conditioned environment on the couch or something. Not that it would taste bad then, but it really feels like those two things go together and it enhances your experience. Number three on our list is to be mindful of what you eat and drink before you drink. You know, this is one of those ones that it's like not necessarily your environment, it's more of a choice that you make or something that you're aware of, but I don't think a lot of people realize it. Right, this falls more under the prep category, mm, yeah. or if maybe you're finding one of your favorites and you're not really into it, then maybe think back 
Did I just do whiskey's worst enemy? Did I just brush <laughs> my <true>. teeth? <laughs> Number one offender, brushing your teeth right before you have whiskey. And yes, I use Aquafresh. I know, I get that question all the time. It's like boxers briefs and what type of toothpaste oh, do you geez. use? Also, it's like, you know, drinking uh, orange juice right after you brush your teeth tastes right. awful. So that one's kind of a no brainer, but like right. if you eat something really spicy and then mm -hmm. have a high proof whiskey right afterwards, or even, you know, an hour later. Not a good time. Those spices can be lingering on your tongue. Mm -hmm. It can affect the way that you taste the whiskey. On the other side of that coin, if you have a delicious dessert and then follow it with a really nice Ooh. pour, it might make it taste richer. So you can kind of plan, if you're gonna have something really special, kind of be mindful and plan what you're gonna eat or drink right, right before it. And I mean, what you drink too, we see that in the flight fight effect all the time. Absolutely. Trying one thing against another. Yes, uh, that's why we always talk about going up in proof, mm -hmm. maybe saving that rye until your last pour. Like, it's a you good know, one. if something does come up where, man, this really just tastes weird to me tonight. Well, you just had an Elijah Craig barrel proof beforehand <laughs> and now you're drinking an 86 proofer. So I also kind of have to think about judges when they're doing these spirits competitions. Okay, and, that's getting a little too into it, but yeah, you're right. Well, they do it for a reason. They monitor what they're eating or drinking beforehand. Even I've heard, what they're smelling, candles. I've heard crazy stories, of, crazy stories. Of, of them not brushing their teeth for several days. <laughs> we don't need to take it that far. So just be mindful. All right, before we move on to the list, we're gonna take a little pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. Hey, did you notice that we have been changing out our shirts in all of these uh, different ones and we're gonna continue to do it after this? Now they're gonna notice. Now you're gonna notice. And you can get all those shirts. Yeah, at Whiskey Ambitions. Plus, we now have a Glen Karen holder and Glen Karen travel set. So that means you can get just the holder by itself or you can get it loaded with the Glen Karens of your choice. These are the crystal cut Glen Karens, which are now back in stock. Also in stock is the fall candle scent, which you can uh, get. I know, you know, it's- uh, I just couldn't wait. Couldn't, it's couldn't August, wait. not quite fall, but I just yeah. couldn't wait. It's prime bourbon drinking season. It's soon. a seasonal scent, so go check that out. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And that is where we release our exclusive barrel picks, some exciting stuff coming out there. The opportunity to participate in a barrel pick, another round with us and discount at whiskeyambitions.com. Boom, all right, see you after this. Next up is some whiskey care. Now yes. here we are in our bourbon bunker. Also known as the library. Which is, uh, uh, yeah, that's why I wore oh, this, <laughs> this shirt. But caring for your whiskey, we're talking about some more preventative measures mm. to keep the whiskey that you like how it tastes right now, staying. Still tasting. <laughs> still tasting. How you like it. Like that uh, in the future. Yeah. First thing, uh, you want to store your bourbon in a cool, dark place. Perfect, I love cool, dark places. Uh, yeah, that's that's right Look up at me. Sarah's this is where I belong. alley. <laughs> this place actually is great when we're not filming. It is completely dark. There's no windows in here, so no sunlight. Living in a world of darkness. And it's uh, relatively cool, you mm -hmm. know? Breaking Bourbon did a great oh, two year study on this. this. They had uh, sample bottles of different fill levels stored in different places, all of exactly the same whiskey. So they had one set in uh, direct sunlight, another on a bookshelf in, in a darker place, and another one in a refrigerator. And huh. they found the thing that made the most uh, change to the detriment was that those bottles that were in the sunlight. The sunlight, so prolonged yeah. exposure to sun, huh? Mm -hmm. This should have been my science fair project back in the day. I should've. love this type of experiment. It should have. Now, the fill level is a thing. When you have a bottle like this, now this is an example of one that we need to put in. We've been very bad. <laughs> smaller bottle because- It's been around for a while. Our beloved Al Young uh, Four Roses small batch is something, that, this is all we have left in the world, mm. something that we go back to very seldomly. Right. Sort of a special, special occasion, occasion thing. So having it with this much air for that long of time can change it. Mm. If you're drinking this regularly, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. But if it's uh, more of a special occasion pour at this level, yeah. we need to put this in a smaller bottle. Yeah, because this guy's been open for a while. But sometimes oxidation is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And if you pour a new bottle into your glass and you might want to let it sit for five, 10 or 15 minutes, you know, some people would recommend that you do that in order to allow yeah. you know, it to come in contact with the air and open up a bit so especially on your higher proof things a lot of times yeah. uh, let it breathe yeah yeah you kind of you kind of need to let it breathe so oxidation not always a bad thing but when it comes to but things it like can this be. do we want to risk it i think not so excuse us while we go put this in another bottle yeah. and lastly try your whiskey blind or double blind if you can 
We really love this method because it takes out all your preconceived notions about a whiskey, uh, whether that be based on the price that you paid for it, uh, the reputation, or just the marketing, really. Yeah, take take all that out of Get the it equation. Get out of here. I have a good story about that. So the day I was having sort of a, a bourbon night with a friend mm -hmm. and our theme was sort of, you know, impress me. Mm. Uh, so you have no idea, we're pouring for each other. There was a pour that I was really kind of going on about. I was like, oh, this is really good. I love the mouthfeel, you know, everything. I hear I was thinking it was, this was maybe like LE or something, oh. you know, something limited at, at least. And it was just a really good pick of, uh, of a newer brand. Now, if he had given that to me and I had seen it from the get go, I would have still enjoyed it. Sure. But I might have internally sort of reserved mm -hmm. some of my thoughts. Like, yeah, this is this is really this is really solid. You have expectations. Exactly. But when all that's taken out, it's just like the possibilities are endless, and yeah. you really just know truly how you feel about mm. a whiskey. And that's the beauty of a double blind. If you have somebody that can help you out and pour things without you knowing what it is at all, um, that's great because then you really can give your true feelings based on it. <laughs> now, if you don't have someone that can help you out, you can do it just blind. So you would know yeah. the four. It would be important to have matching glassware you can mix them up and taste them in. The trouble with blind flights can be, what sometimes happens to me is that I know the whiskeys that are in the blind flight, so I my brain tries to do the matching game and like, can I figure out which one's which? Mm -hmm. Which is taking away from the experience of, right. how do I actually feel about this pour? Yeah. But either way, blind is a good option. Did you really think we were only gonna leave you with five? Come on, you know we, we gotta have a bring bonus. the extra. Here's a bonus. Now this one we saved as a bonus because those first five you weren't adding anything to We're the not whiskey, changing right? Changing what's not in the glass. Changing what's in the glass. Now we are, but it's a pretty obvious one. A lot of people say to add water. Now I feel like you know maybe this happens uh, a lot more. You know, started obviously with the older mm -hmm. Scotch, right? Scotch has been around longer than bourbon, but you know, with especially barrel proofs, which uh, a lot of bourbons can be uh, up there in proof, we adding like water, stretching out that bottle, make it last longer is always a good option. And it does change the whiskey, sometimes for the sure. betterment, sometimes for the worse. But it can impact in the flavors and how you perceive it. Absolutely. Now there's another way that people might kind of connect more with cocktails, mm. and that is smoking the glass, like doing a smoked old fashioned. You did one of these just the other day. I did, but that was a cocktail. Smoked old fashioned, it was, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. You can take, now this is, as you can see, cut for a rocks glass, but you can also just take your Glencairn, give it a little toast, put that right on there. An Let extra kind of enhancement. Soak up. And there's other ways that you can uh, do this, but you get a little smoke in there and then pour in your bourbon and now you have a smoked bourbon a smoked or glass. smoked whiskey. That does change it up. Give me that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And in addition to adding water, you can also obviously add a cube of ice if right. you like. Uh, let Chill, it sit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the time that it sits with the ice chilling and mm -hmm. those all impact the whiskey as well. This kind of makes me feel like I'm I sitting, like out, this. sitting outside by the fire. So it's sort of like we We brought the campfire said, inside. Uh, yeah, is, is go outside. If it's too cold out or you're just not feeling it, it's rainy. Bring the outside in. Oh, I like that. We're doing something like that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Well, thanks so much for coming along with us uh, on this journey. If you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. Until next time, drink more bourbon.